can you share with our viewers today that they could uh, first of all become aware of those biases mm -hmm. and then really start responding to them so it's yeah. awareness recognizing the the variety of them and how they're impacting mm -hmm. them i'll tell you a little story i first became aware of my own biases I didn't even know that word, what that word meant, apart from sewing, you know, where you cut cloth on the bias. Um, I was part of the Salvation Army team that went to Nauru when the offshore processing for asylum seekers reopened. And it was as a white Australian who'd grown up in largely white Australia, everybody looked like me, thought like me, sounded like me. And here I was in a Pacific Island culture, working with people from a variety of different uh, nationalities and the first thing that I noticed was my body oh stomachs churning shoulders were tensing and I took me a while but I realized that my body was actually telling me I was afraid mm. and I'm thinking well why am I afraid you know the asylum seekers were in a camp there were fences security guards and I thought around what what has happened in my life that makes me feel afraid, mm. not just in an unusual or uncomfortable situation, but in this situation? And I thought back over my life, like I would have said I didn't have a racist bone in my body, but I started to reflect on the different stories that I'd been told as a child about if you were different to me, then you were wrong. Mm. And I realized that I'd learned that difference was a threat. And then I thought, ah, all of these people, whether they were the Nauruans or whether they were the asylum seekers from, you know, um, Afghanistan and Pakistan and Iran and Iraq, they were so different to me. And so I was making an assumption that these people were, th were a threat. So the process that I use now and that I teach is first of all, listen to your body. Mm. What are the cues? They can be physical, like, you know, the churning stomach, or they can be emotional, feeling uncertain, uh, frustrated, maybe even angry. So look for the cues. Second, ask some questions. Questions are key. What's going on? What has just happened? Why is this different to what I normally experience? Then third, look at the narratives. What are the narratives that, from your own life that have shaped your thinking? And then you can identify what the bias might be. For me, it was identifying my own racist bias and white privilege, but it could be um, identifying a, a sexist bias, could be identifying an ageist bias. Sure. It's not limited just to one side of bias. Mm. Thank you so much for those tips and, and for your personal sharing. It really helps me connect with it and mm. I'm sure our viewers as well. What research and education is going into this space? Because it's absolutely huge.